What is up my beautiful people? Uh in today's video we're going to be doing uh my personal list of the top six GTA drift vehicles. So let's get into it. So at number six we're gonna have the the Phoenix. Alright. The Phoenix is a muscle car resembling a Trans Am, if I'd have to guess. I'm not quite sure. It's a mix of a lot of cars. But, just by looking at this car, you probably won't think it can drift. But, it sort of can. Let's actually go over here to this parking lot. Because it has this nice area over here. It's not the best, that's kind of why it's at number 6, but it can somewhat drift. It is a decently fast vehicle, and if you want to use it for like RPs or whatnot, speedometer is super easy to see, same with the tachometer. Um, it's just a, it's all around good vehicle, and not that hard to find. I'm not sure, I don't think you can buy it, but I know you can find it on the streets. So that's going to be number six. And at number five we have the Futa. So this vehicle has been in the game for quite a while. And it used to be like the best drift vehicle there was because it was just super slidey. But it's not the best anymore, but it is still pretty good. So that's uh, why it's at num it, the fifth spot. All of these vehicles are fully upgraded, by the way. And they're just kind of showing you how they uh, operate. It is a relatively quick vehicle, speedometer and tachometer are pretty easy to see as well. So if y'all are going to use it in like RPs or something, this would be a great vehicle. As you can see, you can see exactly your speed, we're going about 70, now 80, just on that little stretch back there. It's not the worst ve drift vehicle, but it's not quite the best. It is a cheap little car. It's only like 16 grand. And, uh, that is number five. At, and at number four, we have the Willard Faction. As you can see, it is a muscle car. It is relatively fast. Speedometer and tachometer kind of hard to see. I guess you can lean down or oh, duck and you can see them pretty easily. But this is going to be number four because of the way it drifts, actually. I did a video with this car a long time ago when I showed y'all how to stance it and whatnot. I got like no views, so I don't know if y'all remember this car, but I mean, it's a decent car. It's, it's like 60 something thousand. I'm not quite sure. But I've always found it decent if you can get it to a uh, drift. If you can start it, and then if you can get up uh, drift leading into the drift like this, so it does some pretty slick drifts. Now, the problem with this is it will catch, if you, uh, and it spins out a lot if you're not careful. But see if I can get it to catch. 
so sometimes when you're drifting it'll catch and just go speeding off it's not gonna do it now but you can uh, imagine how bad that would be hit a wall or something all right so that this is number four and at number three we have the drift Tampa I know a lot of y'all are gonna get mad about this but this is my personal list I uh, to be honest I, I found the drift Tampa pretty good of a drifter you might uh, have other opinions and uh, that's it that's that's your opinion this is my opinion I so I will admit drift Tampa it's it's a lot harder to drift but once you do learn how to drift it it's pretty easy and I have not used this car in a while so I'm not the best drifter I don't claim to be with any of these cars or in general I just I'm not really that good but I do know somewhat how to drift so this is third because it's uh, it's pretty fast it's meant for drifting although it might be hard to drift it and uh, the reason why it's so hard to drift is because it is four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive whichever term you prefer but that means the front tires will gain traction a lot sooner than the back so it'll just like a won't be a complete drift it'll kind of be like a half drift like somewhat like this one right here it'll be like more of a half drift instead of like a full drift but you can take advantage of that and get directly where you need to be in the road just like that or like this but since it is all wheel it is pretty good at accelerating and gaining speed so that is going to be number three at the number two spot we have the Banshee 900 R alright so the Banshee if you're wondering speedometer tachometer really easy to see right there and uh, the reason why it's in this spot is it is a very good drift car and the traction is insane when you want it to have traction like if you look at these turns it's got so much traction kind of a uh, cancels out anything bad that you can really think about it but there really isn't anything bad about it it's a really nice car all right and on to the drifting car drifts as you'd expect it to I mean, it's not like really good at drifting, but it's not terrible. But if you were to master this car, you can probably get it to drift really, really well. So, yes, Banshee 900R. The regular Banshee would, I'd put it in the same spot as this just because they're pretty similar but the Banshee 900R is just a cooler looking variant of it and once again traction is insane because it is in the supercar class it was in the sports car until you upgrade it to the 900R I mean just look at this traction even if I uh, slow down and just gun it you just gas it around this corner it's just got so much traction 
a little bit of decently fast. I mean, we're probably hitting about a 90, 80 mile an hour. It's kind of hard to see the dials because I didn't make them different colors. Because this is a Benny's vehicle, I could have done that. But that's gonna be the number two slot. And at number one, this probably doesn't come as a surprise for a lot of you. It would be the Drift Yosemite. Just because of the fact that it's really good at drifting and is a truck. Well, the, it's a truck doesn't really have much of an effect on the way I uh, order these. But it's pretty cool that a truck can drift like this and it made it onto the list even though it is meant for drifting but so let's get into it speedometer not really the best you really can't see it too well it's not like the banshee or nothing so it's kind of it'd make it difficult in rps all right so you couldn't really see your exact speed and follow the speed limits and whatnot Unlike the Banshee, doesn't really have much traction with this stuff. I mean, it's got a decent bit, but it's just sliding even with that. But I guess it is a drift truck, so that's probably going to be expected. Just... I guess it just loses traction. But onto the actual drifting portion of this truck so truck drifts very smoothly with some time you can most likely master this this truck and even though it is it's, it's a very light vehicle for even for a truck I mean this thing is just super light. If you hit like a bump it'll send it flying. The suspension's pretty soft too. So if you're gonna have this vehicle as like a normal truck like I have it, it's not really gonna do as well as you would hope. Somewhat probably because it's really low to the ground and suspension stiffened and another factor is the actual turbos, the twin turbos sticking out of the hood. Now mine does not have twin turbos sticking out of the hood, which I do like, but there is still the holes where the twin turbos would be. You can hide the twin turbos by getting a sportier hood, one with the scoop. That does hide them, but as of right now, you cannot get rid of the twin turbos legitimately you have to do some stuff to get rid of them maybe if this video gets enough likes I'll uh, show you all how to remove them and um yeah so this would be the number one vehicle now it does have a lot a lot of torque and power all going to those rear wheels because it is only rear wheel drive that's why it can wheelie because it is in the muscle class as you all can see but I mean you can do some stupid wheelie things with it if you really wanted to by just feathering it and basically doing a wheelie while staying still just scratch up the uh, rear bumper a lot see as you can see when we're up in the air that's all the suspension has to travel that's all of the travel in it and if you can see in the back I really can't like show y'all right now but it's just like the front it's uh usually with a truck if it had four wheel drive it would have those uh what are they called those Oh, I can't remember the name. 
I know what they are. I can't remember the name though. So it's got a knuckle joint on it, and it's like a bar that makes it so the front wheels will turn. So it it's mostly found on like four wheel drive vehicles. But the problem is that is on the back. I don't know if you can see that. We'll try to get. So the front suspension is exactly like the back. So it's just those rods. Well, the, the front really doesn't have the rods because it's not front wheel drive or all wheel. But uh, I can't think of the name right now. But let me see if I can get y'all a better view. If you see right there, I don't know if y'all could have seen that, but it's just like the front suspension but at least it's not the independent like the original Yosemite but in the back it still does have that uh, hump in the middle for the suspension because the actual transmission is up there so right below that is the transmission um, but I'm not going to go too much into detail and I guess I'll uh, let y'all go and uh, catch you next time. See ya. And uh, this is what I meant by the fact that the suspension is very soft. I mean, it's it is on the one side, and it's like pushing that one into the ground, but the wheels are going into the ground and you cannot turn without it just flipping out on you so anything in the back is going to affect how this thing drives so it's not really the practical vehicle for like RP or nothing if you want to have anything at all in the back if you see this it is just gone. I mean, you could probably just do this and cruise around with your friends and have a little bit of fun and watch the back end spaz out and go into the ground. I mean, just this thing still it is scraping the ground. And then if you just hard accelerate, it's just it's not good. So, that's what I meant by the suspension is very soft. The only time it levels out is when you brake hard. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what I meant when I said the suspension is very soft.